Hey guys, welcome back to or welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Tyan Alton. And if you have, thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting me. You have no idea how much it means to me and I'm so grateful for it. And Happy New Year! It's finally 2021. I'm already off to a great start. Someone's already tried to fight me today. Um, hurt my foot. Car could get stolen. And I'm late with filming, editing and writing my script. I'm off to a great start. Anyways, um, this is my last episode, well not in the True Crimes of Australia series, but in this mini-series on the Ivan Malat Backpacker Murders case. And in this episode I will be covering catching Ivan Malat, his trial and life in prison, and his death. And it will be a little bit long, it will be a little bit different to past episodes because I'm just going in date and a little bit of information on each and yeah i hope you guys like this if you do hit that like and subscribe button and comment down below any australian true crime cases you would like me to cover or australian missing person cases and yeah let's get into it how police were able to catch ivan malat and figure out that he was their killer is actually pretty interesting um, if you remember my last three videos where I talked about the um, seven known victims and suspected victims of Ivan Malat, um, you will remember me mentioning a 22 caliber Winchester Ruger rifle. And it is actually pretty important because how they were able to narrow down the weapon and find Ivan Malat is because when the ballistics and the forensics everything was being done, they took note of the serial numbers or what they believed were the serial numbers and got them confirmed with the company. They took those serial numbers on the actual bullets found at crime scenes and the packaging, well, packet for the bullets and they were able to tell, know exactly what model of the rifle they were looking at and when they were fired and what kind of rifle it was. And it, really helped them and they were actually able to narrow down the amount of those rifles that were in Australia at that time and they were able to track down which gun shop actually had those rifles in them. And I found that really interesting um, because they had to really narrow it down because I think there was about 55,000 Ruger rifles in Australia at that time and all of that kind of led more to Ivan lot. As I mentioned in my very first video, it was inevitably Ivan Malat's brother's mouth that got him caught because they were all about bragging and letting it on a little bit too much. And it really came down to two brothers, Alexander Alex um, Malat and Richard James Malat. Alexander had been at some shoot out, a shoot competition with one of his friends. And his, his friend told police that they should really talk to Alex because of some claims he was making about what he had seen in a Belangelo State Forest one day. So when they were speaking to him, he mentioned seeing two cars when he was driving past at a junction and they kind of had to go around each other. And he noticed something strange about these cars. One of them was a 1980 model Ford um, Falcon that was chocolate brown and the other one was a dual cab utility ute that was said to either be a Holden Rodeo or a Nissan Navara. It was beige on the bottom and brown on the top and he said there was a lot of people in these two cars there was women in them and women kind of looked frightened like they were kind of bound and gagged but you know a lot of kids going to the forest like looking for a good time so he thought nothing much of it but because his friend was driving the vehicle that they were in at the time Alex was able to take more note of the other two vehicles and he also mentioned to police that he had actually seen that very same for the Ford Falcon in the Blangelo State Forest before and didn't think anything of it someone knows the area that's coming back with some other people but when the police were interviewing him, they said that some of these details felt a little bit too on the mark, like there was too much detail. He obviously 
trying to cover something, you know, when you lie, you add as much detail as possible. And some of the details were just really inconsistent and the dates didn't match with anything of the victims and the victims he was trying to describe. And that would led them to believe that he might not be telling the truth. Either he was involved or a family member of his was involved and that was really their question and they really started questioning Alex's motives and ultimately kind of did lead them to Ivan because of him talking to them and it made them wonder if he was actually trying to distract police from the actual killer and the thing with the other brother which is James Malat, is that he was working at a place and he would say some very odd strange things and slowly over time those things just stacked up and came back to bite him in the ass. So he would say things before any victims were found, like um, there's more bodies there, they just haven't found them yet, I know he killed the Germans and you can pick up anyone on that road and they, you'd never see them again and you'd never find out who did it. Those were really strange and unfortunately he said those things to the wrong people and they went and told investigators and investigators started questioning him. And the weird thing was is that at the time he was going by the, the name of Paul Thomas Miller instead of Richard James Miller and he actually had two licenses for each name and he got in some pretty hefty trouble with that and got fined quite a lot. After a lot of digging and a lot of things leading police and investigators to Ivan Malat, Task Force Air actually put Ivan Malat under surveillance, under surveillance on the 26th of February 1994 and Paul Thomas Onion, the one who got away, um, after reading about some of the things going on in Australia in British newspapers, he called in a tip and pretty soon they were uh, arranging for him to come to Australia and pick out his kidnapper, the person who tried to uh, abduct him, essentially. And on the 5th of May 1994, Paul Thomas Onion famously picked out number four in a line of photos of suspects and number four was Ivan Mullar. On the 22nd of May 1994, Clyde Small led a group of officers to Ivan Mullar and was responsible for arresting him. And pretty soon after that, the police went and raided all of the Mullar family members' properties and damning enough found a lot of the backpacker victims belongings in each of the properties and actually when they searched Admiral's Eagle Vale home they found a metal drink bottle that had been scratched out and using forensic technology they were able to tell that the name Shimmy was written on the bottle and that had the person had well Admiral had tried to scratch that off and this was Something that was noted with all of the murders is that certain things would be missing like cameras, um, drink bottles or backpacks or sleeping bags and Ivan Malat, like many other serial killers, likes to have little souvenirs like things to show off where he'd been, what he's done, like a little memento of everything he had done and it was trophies to him. He was not the first to do it and definitely probably won't be the last. On the 24th of October 1994, Ivan Malak's committal began and it basically was just on charges of seven murders and attempted abduction and related charges and the committal hearing produced 2,000 pages of transcripts. On the 11th of March 1996, Ivan Malak's trial began. And in the committal hearing, the magistrate had decided that Ivan Malat would stand trial with a jury of 12. During the trial, of course, the defense tried to argue that Ivan Malat had been framed for crimes that had been committed by his other family members. 
On the 27th of July 1996, Ivan Malat was convicted of the seven backpacker murders and convicted of the attempted abduction of Paul Thomas Onion. He was sentenced to seven consecutive life sentences plus six years for detention for advantage. In 2010, the remains of Angel were found in Belangelo and they were never able to identify Angel and she was named Angel because of the shirt that she was wearing and she had been killed in a very similar fashion to other backpacker victims. Now let's talk about Ivan Malat's life in prison. Ivan Malat spent the whole time he was in prison pretty much trying to convince everyone else that he was innocent and claiming that he was innocent. He would often sign his letters to anyone as Ivan is innocent and he would go basically crazy and like cover his cell walls in stickers or sticky tape or just plain wall with the words Ivan is innocent. He went so far with the I am innocent thing that he would swallow paper clip, razor blades, flushing me mechanisms and many other things and when he um, appeal for his sentence because he tried to appeal that many times was denied every single time he cut off his pinky with a plastic knife and attempted to mail it to the high court in Australia and that didn't work and he was sent to a hospital, shackled to the hospital bed and doctors decided that surgery to reattach the finger would not be possible. And even on his deathbed he would never admit that he was guilty. That he would say he was innocent his, the whole time he was in prison and that wasn't going to change on his deathbed. Ivan Malat died in Long Bay Correctional Complex, Sydney at age 74 in 2019 and he lost his life after a long battle with esophagus and stomach cancer and he wrote one final letter to his family requesting that his funeral be paid for by the New South Wales government and apparently his last words were, I don't care. Anyways, I hope you guys liked this video. Um, this is the end of me covering Ivan Malat, unless there are any more updates or more victims are found. And yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Um, I'm so excited to finally be done. I can't believe I did this whole case. And I can't believe you guys are liking the videos and subscribing to my channel. And yeah, thank you so much. You're making my dreams come true. You don't know how much it means to me. And yeah, so next case, I am not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing yet. I have a whole list of cases and missing person cases I want to cover. Got to pick which one I want to do next. I figured I would do the small little series on one case and then do the smaller cases. Just to mix it up. And again, don't forget to get Sins of the Brother and Malat. I will have the Amazon links down below. Those are not... Um, affiliate links by the way. I don't get paid for those. I get paid for the um, Twisted Eyewear one. But yeah, I haven't even scratched the surface of the information on Ivan Malat. So if you want to learn more, please check these books out. They are so good. And yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Ow! In Long Bay... I keep fucking this up. Ivan Malat was arrested on the